out because it's doing so well right now. It's a very strong weapon. Jayun's a very strong character. So yeah, really no surprises. Stingray also said that it's really not his kind of weapon. Even if he sees it doing really well this tournament, he probably won't pick it up. All right. Well, at the very least, basically guaranteed to have a Jayun in the grand finals right now. We've got Phazon versus Sandstorm in the winner's final. We've got the Hanbak Jayun on Phazon, and then I think that's Death Jester on Sandstorm. Now it's interesting seeing Phazon this far because Phazon has only placed top three twice Ever? in over a year. In over a year. Okay. And now he's guaranteed top three. So this is huge to see him come out with this new weapon when Ooh. other players who have a better pedigree than him are also playing with this new weapon. And look at the health right now. 45 seconds into the game, has Sandstorm in the red. The sword, a very familiar weapon to Phazon coming out. Pocket Sand gets the KO and a massive lead here in game one for Phazon of all players. Yeah, I know uh, Daiku actually tweeted out about this, that Sandstorm, he's done a lot of practicing of the offensive of the Greatsword, but hasn't done too much practice of the defense of it. And uh, he's confident in his mirror match ability, but right now Phazon, able to do a little bit of both, is one of the reasons why he is out surviving Sandstorm, putting out that offensive damage. But there comes Sandstorm with a fantastic reset in the middle of that one. Got him with the opener and then reset for the big three-piece to finish off the stock. Now, I did mention Faison's possible other picks coming out with the Hattori and the Wu-Shang. Sandstorm also has another pick, and it's specifically a counter pick for Greatsword, and it's coming out with the familiar Onyx that we've seen from him several times in the past. He feels like he can float above and fly over a lot of what Greatsword has with the cannon very easily. So even if his Greatsword doesn't work out, which, I mean, it's doing really well right now, he's already tied it up, brought back from that huge lead that Faison has, he still has that Onyx as the other pick that he's also very confident in. Yeah, but in the straight one-to-one -one Greatsword mirror match, it looks like Faison is just barely getting ahead, but as I say it, Sandstorm again gets the opener. It's that neutral light opener, and then immediately resets forward with that chase dodge, and then gets the three-piece, finishing off with the neutral closer. Sword again coming out for Faison. This is looking like it might be the weapon, and it is for him to finish off that stock. Now going dead even, seems juggling weapons. What's he gonna stick with? Looks like he's gonna opt for the sword here. He's now used Pocket Sand for two of his KOs. That might be, uh, well, the last one was a side air, but it was really set up with the Pocket Sand. So we'll see if that's kind of his, his favorite. He doesn't have to get quite as much damage on the stock like he would with a D-Light Recovery or a D-Light Side Air to be able to KO with just the standard sword. Yeah, that Pocket Sand, definitely one of the favored signatures on the Jay Yun Sword Kit. Oh, Sandstorm swinging back with this great sword. He's getting the better in the neutral. You're seeing him open up Phazon just a couple more times than Phazon is. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why he's starting to sneak out this lead. And the recovery from the center of the stage is going to give Sandstorm game number one. Now we're going to be going right into this next one. They're moving on through a lot of soft platform maps being taken out. Small Brawl Haven, Small Enigma, Crystal Temple, Small Great Hall, Miami Dome, all gone. So we just have two of these single moving soft platform maps from Small Mammoth and Apocalypse. And then we also have the Demon Island. Interesting, uh, not too much favoritism towards those soft platforms. I've seen things like we saw Stingray utilizing those soft platforms on Crystal Temple, right? Able to throw out like a down sig on top of it, just getting that extra height on them. You can kind of do the same thing with Jay Yun with the great sword throwing out the neutral sig on those soft platforms. But it looks like they want no soft platforms as we go to Demon Island for game number two. Sandstorm's gonna get the better of the two of the initial weapon spawn. Phazon grabs one very quickly, and they both did get Greatsword initially, but Sandstorm definitely coming out on top here. Moves over to the edge, then fades back a little bit. Didn't want to commit too hard. Phazon with a nice three-piece there. Sandstorm only gets one hit. There's the side light. Oh, beautiful finish off. That was an orange KO for Sandstorm there. That's been one of the very scary things about his Great sword that I didn't quite see from Phazon as much is that possibility for explosion, for him to get those four piece, five piece that ends up in a KO in orange. And that's what's so scary that he was able to do on Scythe, he's been able to do it on Gauntlets, and now that's carried over into his great sword as well. Oh my god, Sand Sandstorm's actually playing this great sword so insane right now. Oh, the reset. Oh my again. gosh. Has Phazon gotten a hit? Oh my goodness, into the neutral stick. I want to rewind and slow-mo all of that because 
It's so brilliant what he was doing. He did like a dash forward turn around neutralite because with Greatsword, you can't continue those strings off stage. So he goes for the option to put Phazon more towards the center of the stage. And then again, resets it more central because he wants to keep this going. Sandstorm is playing this Greatsword so well. Now, something that Phazon was doing better last game that I was hoping from his point of view would continue, it's a nice insig to KO off the top, is Sandstorm was throwing out a lot of moves and Phazon was mostly avoiding them. But then you saw on that second stock there, uh, Phazon just fell into everything. The dodge was gone, the movement options were gone, and Sandstorm put out like 100 damage in just a matter of moments. So definitely a different game than we saw in game one. Sandstorm adapted very quickly to the way Phazon is dodging and avoiding his attacks. Yeah, the way that first stock went really made me feel like Sandstorm had already honed in on how Phazon wanted to dodge out of these greatsword strings. Doesn't even matter, can't dodge all the nares. Sandstorm takes game number two in convincing fashion. And now it's on Phazon, he's gotta clean up those uh, defensive options as he switches over to the Wu Shang for game number three. Now he is coming in with this Wushong pick. Now I was thinking because we saw that Sandstorm has a counter pick on a, a character with gauntlets. Boomy going into this picked a character with gauntlets. And I was wondering if it was like specifically a gauntlet matchup thing. And I was talking to Boomy about it. And he was saying, really, gauntlets are just kind of like one of your second best weapons in the game in general. So it's just a really strong weapon that you can play regardless of what you're playing up against. Yeah, I can definitely uh, I can definitely feel that. I don't feel like a lot of people think Gauntlet's is specifically favored in the matchup against Greatsword, uh, but like you're saying, Gauntlet's just very good overall in the game right now. Of course, Faison not starting off with the Gauntlet's. He has the spear in hand on this Reino Wuxiang. Shouts out to Dan Fornace and everybody else at the Rivals of Aether team. Nice side sick from Phazon. Not even going to send Sandstorm off screen. Ooh. He is just in the orange. Ooh, man, that yeah. he should not have gone yeah. with that. That was so dangerous. He did it. He started it so high up. It was incredibly telegraphed. I think if he had reset his jumps before it, it would have been a little bit better. Because he didn't really reset his jumps, he was forced to go for that wall option and then just started making them predictable. Put him in that panic position. Sandstorm again with this great sword, trying to widen this gap in the stocks, going with a falling down air punish opportunity, but he goes oh, too no. early. Oh. <laughs> Bro, that's me in rank every <laughs> time a Wu Shank charges that down thing. I'm like, I'm gonna punish it, and I never punish it. The power of charge signature is just kind of mixing you up. I'm surprised he didn't just go straight for the downlight. Downlight has the range advantage there, but either way, Phazon capitalizing on the little misstep from Sandstorm. Nice down air into the side air. Side six coming out just over that corner. Phase on, bro. You gotta chill a little bit more. Oh, does a good job staying out of the way of so many of those moves. Nice little down air out of hit sun. Also did a nice. weapon toss to follow it up. Oh, why? Brother. What are these? What are these ground pounds from Phase on? They're so incredibly risky. They make me sweat just a little bit every single time. He's on pace with Sandstorm so far, but I just think the risk to reward there is just not favorable for Phazon. But either way, he has gotten Sandstorm into the red here. Phazon just needs a sidelight into the recovery. Could be the stock if he can find that hit. Meanwhile, Sandstorm taking full advantage of the huge hitboxes of this greatsword. Resets backwards towards the stage to continue the string. Weapon Toss also connects onto Phazon, and Phazon is gone. 3-0 in favor of Sandstorm, and he is going to the Grand Finals. Very easy set, or at least it looked easy for Sandstorm. Uh, really kind of... Uh, aside from that first game, Phazon didn't really have much there to answer. He'd be on pace for a little while, but then Sandstorm would just kind of take it and run. You saw that in the last game that we just watched. They were even, both of them were on their second stock in the red, and then all of a sudden, Sandstorm got the KO. Phazon was trying to answer back. You saw that Gauntlet side sig come out, and then there was a massive, monstrous punish that put out basically 100, maybe more than 100 damage. That all